The way to stay focused while you prep to run a tabletop game is to have systems for focusing, which is obvious but not easy or else we'd already be doing it. So what do we mean when we say prep? Prep, short for prepistan, is kind of a big umbrella term that covers a range of interrelated but distinct activities. And since each one necessitates a different way of thinking, it's important to know which kind of prep you're sitting down to do. World building is creating a setting for your game to take place in. You know, the fun part. This is a common place for your campaign idea to incept in your brain. You're out living your life, you see a sticker of a skeletal fish, you start wondering what a world would be like if only fish became ghosts, and suddenly the dam in your mind is overrun with questions. Is there a fish god? Can you study ectoic theology? How strictly do you define fish? This is pure divergent thinking, starting with the seed of an idea and then extrapolating outward toward infinite possibility. It's also called lateral thinking because it doesn't follow a straight line. You went from fish sticker to ghost fish world and that's not exactly a direct route. You might know this as how your brain prefers to operate because it's an extremely common way for people with ADHD to approach the world. World building prep can take many forms, creating a fish map, building a fish magic system, writing fish Satan's backstory, anything focused on materially enriching the game's setting constitutes world-building prep. When you sit down to this type of prep, your focus is on the world. Campaign prep, on the other hand, is focused on structure. This is also a common place for ideas to incept. Instead of examining the world implications of ghost fish, you ask, what would a school of murderous ghost fish controlled by underwater wizards be like? World building is often a component of this, oceanic necromancers gotta live somewhere, but here it's done in service of creating the scaffolding for your campaign. What are the motives of the villains? What's their nefarious plan? How can the party uncover it? This is where you form and flesh out your campaign concept itself. While divergent thinking is obviously a part of this, campaign prep involves more convergent thinking, that is, starting from infinite possibility and converging on the best option. Crafting the villain's plan, seeding clues, determining the key milestones, all of this is creating a conceptual structure through which the game plays out. And structural thinking is convergent thinking. Those nodes and connection points have to have solidity for the structure to hold. Most of the hard work here is done before your campaign actually starts, but you will revisit it as the game goes on, adjusting and expanding the structure to accommodate the story as it grows. When you do campaign prep, your focus is on the totality of the adventure and narrative. Finally, there's session prep, which is about finding and refining the tools and information you need for the upcoming session. Creating stats for monsters, making roll tables, filling out a dungeon, making encounter maps. These are the granular practical considerations you need to run your game. On the spectrum of divergent to convergent thinking, we are all the way into convergence now. You're not dreaming up a cool encounter, you're taking the cool encounter you already dreamed up and deciding on the number of enemies, what their stats are, and how to deploy them. And I think that's what makes it challenging. It doesn't always play to our strengths. Session prep is also the most context-dependent form of prep. Are you playing in person or online? What's your organization system? Will you have combat this session? How far will the party get? During session prep, you have to make decisions about what matters, what doesn't, and what form it should take. And that's hard when you're staring down the barrel of the infinite. Now, these categories aren't neat and discreet. All of them overlap with each other at certain points. Since the party is going to the docks next session, I need to build out that part of the world in my session prep. But what matters here is your focus. In this instance, I'm world building in service of my session, not just for the unholy joy of it. It's real easy to get sidetracked when these categories bleed into each other. You start working on the docks, and next thing you know, you've built an underwater ghost city. My guess is this happens because when left to our own devices, our brains just tend towards divergent thinking. And since world building is rife with that, it can easily take our focus away from the more mundane stuff. But when you start the session and realize you didn't put any actual people on the docks for them to talk to, that underwater ghost city is going to feel a lot less cool. I mean, it's still cool. It is an underwater ghost city, but if it wasn't done in service of your session, it's useless and you'll wish you'd spent your time on things that matter. Which is really the eternal question, right? How do you know what matters? That is exactly what prep systems are for. A system is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done. I fold my clothes as I take them out of the dryer. That's my system for actually finishing my laundry. As a GM, I record my sessions and listen to them as I prep the next one. That's my system for remembering things that happened. I like to think of it as a sort of structure or framework that I funnel my thoughts through to arrive at a desired outcome. Systems don't tell you what to do, they show you how to go about it. 
It helps to contrast this with a template. Templates are pre-made structures. They give you a list of boxes to check off. But that structure is static. The checklist of questions to ask while world building that you got off Reddit stays the same no matter how different the worlds are you're making. Systems, on the other hand, are dynamic. They're meant to adapt to the needs of the moment. A system won't tell you what the boxes are or even what to put in them. It'll tell you how to figure out which boxes are important to you right now. Let's look at some examples. Map making is a big part of world building for a lot of people, and map systems can be as simple or as complex as you'd like. You could start by tossing a bunch of D6s on a sheet of paper, drawing an outline around them, and making that your landmass. That's a perfectly valid system. Or you could decide the only way is to start from tectonic plates and work your way up, wasting hours determining the location of mineral deposits until you eventually realize your players do not and will never care about this and your time is better spent elsewhere. Which, while embarrassing for whoever did that, is a good lesson to to learn. Again, because this is where your most galaxy-brained thinking happens, world-building systems in particular need strong guardrails to keep you from falling down rabbit holes. A great example of a campaign prep system is Alexandrian's Three Clue Rule. I'm going to summarize it, but like, don't cheat yourself here. I've linked the article in the description. This isn't my idea. It's just one I use constantly. In brief, the three clue rule states that for a given conclusion you want your players to draw, you need three clues, and all of those clues need to point to each other. Clue A should point to clues B and C. Clue B should point to C and A. Clue C should point to A and B, and all of them should point to the answer. This looks more complicated than it is. Let's just make one. If I want the party to discover that the murderer is actually a school of ghostfish, I can come up with three random clues pretty easily. There's ethereal algae on the knife, the locals say a ghost tsunami washed over this part of town last night, the victim was planning to open a spirit sushi restaurant. But when I apply this system, the entire scenario becomes richer. The knife is a chef's knife that belongs to the victim. It has a maker's mark on it from the local blacksmith who sold the knives to the victim for their new restaurant and also witnessed the ghost tsunami wash over town, leaving residue on the forge. In the restaurant, the party can find the rest of the knives, also bearing the maker's mark. Comparing them to the murder weapon will reveal the ethereal algae. I could say a lot about the merits of this specific system, but what matters for our purposes is that it is a system. Nothing on this diagram tells you what kind of clues to create or where to put those clues. It tells you how to approach crafting clues in the first place. Again, to touch on the fluidity of these categories, this system works for session prep as well. Great systems usually have utility in multiple contexts. A session unique system is, like I said earlier, recording my games and listening to them as I prep the next one. Just personally, if your players are cool with it, I strongly recommend this for other GMs with ADHD, since it frees you up during the game to stay in the moment with your players. One of my rules for this system is to not evaluate my performance as a GM while I listen. For the purpose of session prep, you want to focus on what happened, not how you did it. Home games aren't designed to be entertaining to a third party, and analyzing it through that lens means you've removed your focus from the session at hand. If you're streaming your game, you probably do want to make performance analysis part of your process. Just don't confuse it with session prep, or the other way around. I want to talk briefly about one system that I think applies universally. It's a simple system with just one rule, and I live and run games by this maxim. Follow your player's interests. As you start to engage your players in your world building, you'll get data on where to focus. If someone wants to play a divine caster, you know the gods and their relationship to the mortal plane will need to be well developed. Player backstories are also a goldmine of information to inform your focus. Before my campaigns, I send every player a game-style survey and, once things are a little more cooked, a character survey. And I refer to these throughout the campaign to remind me of everything from the village a PC grew up in to whether that player likes puzzles or not. That system keeps me grounded in the kind of game my players and I enjoy the most. The same holds true for campaign prep. Did a mysterious necrofisher destroy the bard's village? Did the rogue once steal a ghost pearl from the Oyster Queen? Does the paladin fight with a spirit harpoon? Your players are telling you what's interesting to them. Build around the threads they're handing you and work them into the larger narrative. And this is nowhere more true than it is for session prep. What were their questions last session? Who do they want to talk to? What's their current scheme? Keep track of the things your players choose to focus on because it will tell you the immediate trajectory of your work. I've been doing this for a 
while, and as far as I can tell, there is no downside to asking yourself, is this what my players care about, during any kind of prep you find yourself engaged in. So what are the takeaways? Know what type of prep you're doing. Sit down with intention to world build, or intention to plan a campaign, or intention to prep your session. You will drift into other forms of prep. When that happens, always ask yourself if it's in service of your original intention. Find and utilize systems. There is no template for building a perfect world, or planning a perfect campaign, or running a perfect session, but there are lots of techniques for approaching that work. Making use of them will guide your thinking and make your prep more effective. Finally, follow your players' interests. They will tell you what they care about in their words and actions. Listen to them, and let the threads of narrative they hand you guide your focus. Part 2 will be a deep dive into the systems that I use. Let me know in the comments whether world building, campaign, or session prep would be the most interesting to you. I'm always fascinated by the systems other GMs use, so tell me yours, too. I've linked the Alexandrian's Three Clue Rule and his YouTube channel in the description. Check it out. It's brilliant. If you want to help me make more of these, there's a link to my Ko-Fi in the description as well. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if this gave you something to think about, and may your systems always give you what you need for success. and unclench your jaw.